I've been hearing the same old broken record since I was a little girl, playing in the background, getting stuck in my head, words I didn't quite understand, apartheid, racism, xenophobia. I was born into a post-apartheid South Africa, the Rainbow Nation. I was born into a country re-emerging from the darkness of racial segregation and violence. I never witnessed the carnage. What did I know of riots or wreckage? All I heard were words of hope as the country rebuilt itself from the darkness, the rubble, the ruins, and spoke to each other and called each other rainbow people of God. I grew up holding the hands of my friends of different colors, different faiths, families, languages, cultures. I kept my gaze to the open sky. I grew up in Cape Breton, an immigrant. I learned to keep my head held high, to call myself an islander, to call myself Canadian while holding on to a foreign past and heritage. What did I know of prejudice? All I'd ever felt was pride and support. But with an onslaught, 9-11 brought to the forefront terrors that have been going on for millennia by people so blinded with hatred, bloodlust, and rage that it spewed out in violence. What did I know of the bombs hitting nations so far away from me? What did I know of terrorism, of battles being waged, of wars in places I had never seen? blaming one another, words aimed like missiles, people wrapped in terror and fury that it rises up like bile at the back of their throats, creating tremors that slice through the stillness of peace, that create tremors of angry energy and angry storms to escape those within. How was I to know that my life was being shaped by events out of my control? My life was being shaped by events out of my control. And a new list, a new word is added to the list. Racism, xenophobia, Islamophobia. And as terrors after terrors go on, my place in this world is challenged. My beliefs scrutinized, judged by the media and government, condemned for actions of others. Hate-fueled propaganda tightens the noose around my neck that I wasn't even where existed. And there are others like me, met each day with subtle reminders that we have been labeled before we even get a chance to introduce ourselves. I should be walking around with a disclaimer around my hijab. I am not a victim. I don't need your saving. It's not my religion or culture that's oppressive. What's oppressive is ignorance and bigotry. But I keep my head held high because I am a Cape Bretoner. I smile at the lady at the checkout counter who asks how I like visiting. I live here, actually. I bite my tongue when I hear someone's English being complimented. I try not to mention how patronizing that is and tell them off anyway. I pray for patience as I explain that I am not from Iran, I am not from Iraq, I am not from Saudi Arabia, I am a Cape Bretoner. I tell the man at the waiting room that this is my country too. I won't go back to where I came from. I'm quite happy here, thank you very much. I keep my head held high because I am a Cape Bretoner. And I'm on the precipice of a cultural gap. I am an immigrant with a Cape Breton heart. I have a Cape Breton heart. <laughs> I am from a foreign land, uprooted but growing, digging my heels into Cape Breton soil, reaching my roots toward new hope, every migrant's dream, a promise for a better life. I am from an island of migrants, ancestral roots overlapping and intermingling, a forest mosaic, and if there is tension in a cultural gap, then we, the youth, are the bridge to the other to prove that there is only us. We, the youth, are the bridge between the old and the new. Old migrants, new migrants. 
We keep our heads held high because we are all Cape Bretoners.